Okay, red light. That means we're on. Ali Mitchell, um, this is a treat. I haven't spoken to you for the longest time. Um, I don't really know how to introduce you. Um, I kind of don't think I need to, but broadcaster extraordinaire and trailblazer in terms of woman in a man's commentary box world, especially in <laughs> cricket. No, but, but it's true. Um, hello, Ali, and, and welcome, and thank you for your time. Oh, it's so good to speak to you, Obi. Um, we go back a long way, really, don't we? Because actually some of, I mean, talking about commentary, you were uh -huh. there alongside me for a lot of my early county commentaries. Yeah. So, you know, you're only as good as the person sitting next to you. And, and I got really good. <laughs> And we had, um, we, had, we had some we had some good times, didn't we? Doing, we had some we had some interesting video. times, that's for sure. You um you said you dug out a picture yesterday that was um when we were sort of uh, lining this up. You said you dug out a picture of um, gosh, that must be two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen. I think, oh yeah, probably around about that time. I lo like the fact that I didn't even tell you what the photograph <laughs> was and you nailed what the story was instantly because it, um, it was T20 finals day yep. in the UK. We were at yep. um, it was Southampton. Yep. So I what was it, it was called the then? The what was it called then? Come what, on. What, the T20 Cup? Yeah, but what was the ground called? Which one was it? Oh, the Rose Bowl. Okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. As opposed um, to the new name, yeah. The, the new name, yes, yes, something, yeah. Um, and I'm pretty sure we were commentating the semi-final. I think Nottinghamshire were playing. Yep. And the fire alarm went off in the middle of commentary. And, you know, you start looking at each other going, is this a drill? And then we've got guys in sort of fluoro jackets coming in at the back of the commentary box going, um, you, you've got to evacuate, you've got to evacuate. <laughs> And our esteemed producer, Adam Mountford, mm -hmm. who is still the Test Match Special Producer, um, had the wherewithal to hand me a radio mic, so a portable mm -hmm. microphone. Um, we pulled off sort of the headsets, evacuated the building, commentating on our evacuation as we went. And then the photograph then is mm -hmm. of you and I then, because they didn't evacuate the ground, it's just the media oh. centre. So yeah. we were then standing outside on the concourse at the top of the back of the stand and we carried on commentating the action, having commentated on our evacuation down the fire escape. Two, two, two commentators who actually rely on, on, on a piece of paper and a notebook in front of them for, for little stats and for little bits of, geez, I must remember to, to, to talk about those things, left to two radio mics. I remember <laughs> you left first, and I then, while you were going down the hallway, the corridor, which you couldn't see, I was then sort of doing the colour bit as you were exiting. And as you finished coming out the other end of the corridor, I let you then uh, take over and I scrambled down to and followed you. And it was, it was seamless if I, um, if I uh, can, I think I can say that. I think if you hadn't have heard the whoop, 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 whoops, no one would have known <laughs> what was going it's, on. It's what, it's, what, it's what the pros do, right? I think, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. But it was, yeah. it was a, um, it was an unusual, look, I, I've never come across that. You've done far more of, of, of many different outside broadcasts, whether it be TV, radio, live flash interviews, etc. That's never happened before in terms of all, all panic stations. And then, and then a cool, calm head. Here's two radio mics. See you later. Go have fun. Yeah, yeah it's true. And we kept it going, didn't we? And we, and yeah, and we, we were standing behind the crowd. There's a couple of old fellas looking around, sort of wondering what the heck's going on. And here's, here's yourself and myself standing there commentating on a game of cricket as if that's what we do. And we're eventually allowed back in, so it was all all right, wasn't it? I mean, there's been a few, few crazy things that have happened sort of mid-commentary um, yeah. in the past before, and you've just got to kind of crack on and keep going through it. Um, but one, the, the thing which always, the one which sticks out in my mind often is um, commentating on the England-Pakistan Test Series in... Uh, Faisalabad in oh. 2005 okay. when there was the sound of an explosion in the middle of the match and more more than that even you could then see a load of debris by the advertising hoardings and this was just after the July 7 attacks in yeah. England, England. Yeah, yeah. and so you knew ev everyone's immediate thoughts were oh my god a bomb's gone off it's a bomb but you couldn't, of course, say that on air because you'd create absolute panic. Like, we didn't know what it was. All we knew was that we had heard 
the sound of an explosion. A loud a noise. A <laughs> <laughs> loud bang. Um, <laughs> it yeah, was a I telephone mean, book on a table. That's all it was, people. <laughs> yeah, something fell off. But anyway, fortunately, that, that turned out to be um, like a gas canister mm -hmm. from a drinks right. cooler that was on the edge of the boundary that had exploded, mm. but it wasn't a bomb. But it, it you know, really, honestly, freaked everyone out. I think um, Ian Bell and Marcus Druscothic might have been batting at the time. And we're in the middle and they sort of like, I remember them racing like towards the pavilion to be met by the security, England security guards sort of saying like, whoa, whoa, wait here as if to say like you're safer in the middle. But yeah, so <laughs> yeah. that was a, yeah, that was another extraordinary moment. <laughs> you've, you've traveled though uh, and, and extraordinary moments are going to happen because you've, 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 how many, how many countries do you reckon you've uh, commentated slash interviewed slash worked in? Um, oh, in, well, the, the cricket ones, as, as you know, Obi, like you tend to get round and round the same yeah. ones quite, quite cricket. a lot. Cricket's um, easy. Yeah, I see cricket's easy. And then it's the sports which I've been really lucky to do beyond cricket, which have taken me kind of outside that, you know, Ellie, amazing bubble of... Ellie, what? you've been fortunate enough to do, not lucky enough. Okay, thank you. You've been fortunate yeah. enough to do. Please, please That's change your language. Change your language. Correct. There you go. I have been fortunate Good. enough. And there you go. Every of um, <laughs> going outside the amazing bubble of um, you know, England and... South Africa and India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, West Indies, Australia, New Zealand, yep. um, Ireland for cricket. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I have done yeah, a lot of other sports. I mean, hockey, netball. Mm -hmm. The Olympics has taken me to, to Beijing. That was my first trip to China ever. Um, I went to Tokyo, Japan for gymnastics for world mm -hmm. championships. That's yep. taken me to a lot of other European nations as yep. well. So lots of... Um, Euros and World Championships in um, Belgium, um, in Holland, for example. Um, tennis has taken me over to Paris for the French Open. Wow. And then Indian Wells Tournament, I did that mm -hmm. several years ago. Now, that's unique. That's a tennis wow. tournament in the middle of the desert yeah. with palm trees and amazing sort of mountains backdrop and the Joshua Tree National Park just down that's the road. Like, so that's, that's the UAE of the middle of the USA, isn't it? That's <laughs> yeah, the there you go. that's another country, UAE. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. another one. Um, just, yeah. yeah, so it's, 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 been, it's been pretty varied, pretty what's varied. The, what's, what, what's it going on? Oh, th these questions are too easy, but what's the toughest one? Where's the, where's the toughest one that you've had, whether it be technical, whether it be uh, language barriers and setting up? Because there's <laughs> so much happens for that little bit of being on air. Yeah, well, do you know what? It also depends on circumstances. I mean, yeah. we've been in, I remember the the day before the start of the 2011 World Cup and Adam Mountford and I for the Test Match Special arrived in what was to be our commentary box. Um, I don't remember what ground is now, Nag Nagpur? Pretty sure the okay. first game that yep. I, I did at that World Cup was in Nagpur. That's City of Oranges, isn't it, Nagpur? I think you're right. right. Yeah, yes. I haven't, yeah. Yep. Um, and the, the commentary box was just a room like no broadcast points, no electrical points, no TV points, just a room. And it had a nice window, it looked out over the ground, that was fine. And, and so well, that's one so of those was, days where so you it was know, Taunton. Uh, it, was, it was the potting shit at Taunton, basically. Well, exactly. You can, yeah. you can be in England, you can have even yeah. more extraordinary yeah. commentary yeah. positions and circumstances. Yeah, yeah like part, climbing up a ladder and having to yes. pass your equipment through the trap yeah. door. I've done that don't, a few times. Don't wear the dress, don't wear the, don't wear the dress <laughs> to Taunton, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, go up the ladder with you. Um, no, after you. So there, there, are days, there, there are certainly days where you arrive at a commentary box at a ground. You go, OK, we're going to be here for a while while we wait yeah. for the engineers to effectively make so, us a commentary box. Um, but then there are other times where you have a, a sort of, you know, perfectly functioning commentary box, but circumstances mean that you are a one-man band. And uh, I mm -hmm. had a day during the T20 World Cup in 2010 where I was both producer, uh, lead commentator, and engineer um, for myself, pretty much. T20 um, I was the only World. One member of the BBC team covering what, what, a game. Where was that? In Barbados. This was in Barbados. Oh, yep, 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 so yep. T20 World Cup, which England ultimately won. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. you know, remember that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I remember setting up, setting up the commentary box. That had been a bit of an ordeal the day before, just because again, you know, lines weren't put in, had to wait for the engineers to come, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and then on the day, I had to draw up my own commentary rotor. Again, that's normally a job that you sort of have an additional computer to do. So I drew up, I drew up my commentary rotor. Um, I looked at the TV rotor to see, right, who's sort of doing what. And I knew that I had um, you know, Tony Cozier, the late Tony Cozier was there. <laughs> and he was going to be my other co-com. 
he was also working for TV. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked, looked around and I was like, I've got nobody to go on air with me. I literally know any, mm. everyone else who was part of our team that day at the time of the, the toss and our first sort of 20 minutes into the whole broadcast was going to be on air tied up with TV. And then oh. more to the point, it meant that if, and I could sit down and get the program on air, no problem. Mm. And, you know, mm. talk for 20 minutes, but then mm. there was nobody to go and fetch yep. someone else to then join me. I was a bit like, well, well how, what, what am I going to do here? And I remember going on air with uh, James Fitzgerald, who at the time was the ICC communications officer. Perfect. And we sort of, uh, there, there, there was some sort of spurious reason why it was editorially appropriate for me to be, you know, on air with the ICC comms <laughs> officer, comms manager to start the broadcast, something about either the state of the pitch or the ground or okay. something or other. But um, we, we, we got by and then James effectively sort of acted as my, as my broadcast assistant for that morning and like mm. went and like grabbed the commentators from TV and brought them into radio with me and, and we got by. But yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of different uh, sort of challenges. You have to be able to think on your feet in the field, that's for sure. Which I will... So you, you've, you've covered too many sports to, to almost to, to keep track of. And I remember you, you said you were off to, to cover gymnastics and, and now gymnastics is not just one athlete doing one sport. You have, you have one athlete doing five different individual activities where you have to school up on, how do you do that? How, you, you, have, you, you do have some of the, the most neatest and, and, and greatest notes in terms of being uh -huh. able to keep track of. How do you structure that? How have you been able to, to, to keep that, I don't want to say level of professionalism because that, that sort of says that you sometimes are not, but how do you keep that, that regimented mm, structure of, of doing all those things? You know, I think it's a bit like a habit and a routine. And like you sports men and women will have your own routines as well, like mm -hmm. pre-match mm -hmm. day or, you know, what you like to do in the nets you know, the day before a game. Mm -hmm. and, and I think I have the same because we're, we're performers as well, but in a, in a yeah. different way. Mm -hmm. And I have a certain process that I like to do before, before a cricket game even. And I had a certain mm -hmm. process I got into the habit of doing before, you know, going to do cover gymnastics. And, you know, I like, I like, I like a four colour biro, still do. You'll remember yeah. these <laughs> from our time yep. together. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I still use pen and paper, largely because, again, yeah. I've been in too many countries around the world where you might have a power cut and yeah, you know, more to the point, you know, my you know phone battery runs down like everyone else's, yeah. and I don't want, I don't rely on technology to get me through. I just know if I've got pen and paper, that is always going to be there. Um, I should actually dig out one of my gymnastics notes because I did a chat with um, Alan Tyers, journalist from the Telegraph, last oh, yeah. just last week, actually, where he was asking me about the very thing about how you know you prepare for commentary and the notes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't so have them at I, your fingertips, do you? Well, I found him. Oh, Ali, this. See, 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 this is the level of professionalism <laughs> that I'm talking. Oh, you have them on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether. Well, I took a photograph of my notes to give him. I don't know whether you can oh, see yeah. that. Yeah, I can. Can you oh, see the tool? Yeah, but that was the enough. grid yeah. I drew up for. Um, that's four colours, too. That's yeah, it is four colours, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there, there's relevance to each colour as well, because yep. it means when I glance down at my notes, I know exactly. I know that like qualifying mm -hmm. scores are in green. So if I yeah. want to know what the qualifying score is on the apparatus before, I just glance down and my eyes are immediately drawn to the little number in green. Yeah. Um, and then this is what it looked like at the end of the men's huh. Olympic yes, all around final, if you can see that. But that, but that is still and, beautifully neat. Now, I, I used to keep track. That's beautiful. Put it, put it away. You're embarrassing some of my... <laughs> I used to, so I would get to the game and I'd have two pages of notes. I'd have a page of uh, notes on one team and a page of notes on the other. And then I'd have two e empty pages that would take up the game, if you like. So I would have my cheat sheets and then I would turn over and I'd have two empty pages for the first innings and for the second innings. And by the end of it, I knew what had happened... <laughs> But there was absolutely no way else, no one else could have had, a, had any of a clue what had happened in that game. But anyone, anyone could look at that and, and, and know what's happened. Well, There's no, I don't know. My cricket ones would have been just as messy as yours. My, my crib sheets, sure, hmm. my actual hmm. notes that I go into pre-game, yeah. they're neat. I'm sitting there writing them down. But yeah. I yeah. did look back, um, like for Alan even, I started to look back at some of my scorecards. And I was like, right, what, what did, for example... Um, Headingly 2019 look like and and I've, I've got all my notes going back to 2003 like the very yeah. first time I started covering county cricket yeah, yeah. And, I, and and did my first test match in 03 as well so I can wow. I can go and pull out here's yeah. my here's my A4 you know 
A4 booklet Book from yeah, all the yeah. testers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but honestly, the cricket ones, they're sort of some half finished, particularly the second <laughs> innings. Oh, yeah. Because I'd often be charged with going down to get post match interviews. Yeah. So I'd, I've got so many half cooked scorecards where I never actually went back and filled in all the bowling figures or anything because I you know, knew what happened and just left the comm box, went down to do my interviews. So they're not kind of complete works of art, some of them. Sure. But then, you know, everyone just gets their yes. own style and their own method, my, don't they, for country? My, and the way you did it, different mine were, to me. Different mine, were, mine were Picassos, definitely Picassos, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like, like the shirt you're wearing. <laughs> Oh, it matches your floral. I didn't realise you were going to wear a floral, but we obviously well, got, the, yeah, we got, the same, got the same memo. We did, we did got the same message, yeah. Exactly. You, are, you are more sort of uh, a springtime blossom, which is somewhat appropriate for, for UK right now, aren't you? There is a blue sky just outside as well, which is nice to see. It's been raining here today, so there's sort of some upsy, upsy, tipsy-turvy uh, things going on. Um, you got into sport because of your dad, that's right. Yeah, I remember you talking about his passion for, for listening to sport on the radio. Have I got that right? Have I remembered that right? Please, please. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my dad and my older brother, I mean, yeah. my mum being Australian as well, had a big oh, part to play in that in terms of the cricket rivalry and yeah. the Ashes. Yeah. Um, and all the, I mean, Australia did have a big influence on me because we used to spend every um, other Christmas as, as yeah. kids over in Australia to oh, see my mum's side of the family. still do. So, uh, yeah, and still, well, I've, got, I've gone more often now since I started working. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been more often than I ever did yeah. as a kid. So, and for longer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's always that, that Ashes rivalry in the household, whether we were watching the Ashes in England and, yeah, it was sort of, you know, dad versus my mum and, huh. and all of that. But, yeah, cr cricket was the sport of choice in terms of what we were kind of brought up on, if you like. Yeah. You know, always cricket in the back garden. Um, always cricket at family picnics, um, mm -hmm. always a cricket on the telly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, my dad played club cricket, so we were always mm -hmm. down the ground on a weekend. Um, and we you were, were in Northampton? Northampton, North North have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Old, yeah. old Wellingburians club was where my dad played. I think yeah. like the old Centurions before that. And so my brother played some club cricket. He played some age group county cricket. He'd go yeah. to Nets and come home and, and then basically sort of act as coach and teach me everything that he'd just been you know, <laughs> learning in the nets with, uh, with yeah. the county age group stuff. Mm. So, um, yeah, I just sort of learned it. But, you know, at, at that time, cricket was not uh, an option given to girls mm. in schools. Mm. Um, so, and I loved sport. And so I, I was playing everything I could. And I was mm -hmm. you know, sort of county and regional hockey player and I yeah. netball and school tennis captain and swimming mm -hmm. and athletics. And I did the high jump. And so I, I did all of it. I didn't even really question that there wasn't a girls cricket team or should there be one yeah, or anything yeah. like that. So I loved everything else I was doing. I just didn't even think really about it. Cricket was the thing that I sort of did, did at home and did with my brother and my yeah. cousins and, and all of that. Um, so I'm so, you know, that's the biggest thing I'm, you know, so pleased for now is that cricket's, mm. cricket's been much more normal for girls to do and it is an mm. offering. And, you know, it's been all those um, you know, school teachers and the charities like Chance to Shine who have gone into schools and have got it established at mm. that level and clubs opening up, mm -hmm. um, you know, way more girls sections than there ever was. So it's just making it more, making it normal, you know, and it's also normal for women's voices to be talking about it in commentary mm. now as well. Because again, when I did it, it was, you know, you didn't hear women's voices on commentary. Who, been... who was the first? Uh, well, Donna, can... Donna is... Simmons. Thank you. Donna yeah. Simmons was a, um, a lawyer from Barbados yeah. who she was certainly the first female voice to do any lead commentary on Test Match Special and cool. Peter Baxter who was the previous yep. TMS producer mm -hmm. had um, met Donna in the West Indies and um, in, she, she got invited, did a bit of commentary with um, TMS there and then came over the um, 1999 World Cup. She did a handful of games there with Test Match Special yeah. but then sort of went back into her, her legal profession Mm -hmm. and and you know worked in that for for many years um and recently i just i heard her voice actually on oh. the uh, on, on some recent west indies cricket and i was like oh donna's back and whilst you know when i first you know started with test match special and started doing county cricket commentary I mean, i hadn't heard you know female voice sort of you know since you know donna there in 1999 yeah. Yeah. and this is sort of was you know me in like 2000 and I think 2006 was the first year I actually did county ball by ball comms. I've been reporting on the game since 2003, mm -hmm. but actually mm -hmm. starting to do commentary was a few yeah. years after that. Um, so it's sort of been a kind of forgotten, you know, in some senses a forgotten voice. Um, it felt as if I was starting from scratch, but yeah. you know what, there was always that sense with cricket 
that listeners did remember Donna. And there would always be some emails that came in, you know, saying, oh, whatever happened to Donna Simmons? So, you know, she made a, a real impact. And I think that, you know, amongst, with, along with many other things, certainly helped to, with the, the sort of atmosphere that I was entering into when I did start to do ball by ball commentary, because that was in stark contrast to, um, to the football scene yeah. where my very good friend, um, Jackie Oatley, mm -hmm. did her first TV football commentaries on Match of the Day. Mm -hmm. And the same year that I did my first international cricket commentaries, which was at the first ever T20 World Cup yeah. in 07. Yeah. And the response and, and the, the reaction of the football world was very, very different mm. to, to what I experienced in cricket. I mean, there are different things going on. I'd done a lot of county cricket and a lot of work with TMS. And my voice, I think, was, was much more established with that audience before I then commentated. That I think actually mm -hmm. most people weren't even aware that it was my first time commentating. Mm. They were just so used to my voice. And you gained that audience trust by then that when it came to actually making that step to commentate, they already knew me and assumed that I'd been doing it for ages anyway. Yeah, well, you, well, I mean, you're going to sound like you've been doing it for ages because you've been around it and done enough voice backwards and forwards for ages. So you already that, had, yeah, you had that, that, that familiarity. Huge, yeah, yeah I, I used to get people at the, at the beginning say to me, um, you know, did you, did, did, do you like cricket? Oh, really? I found was the most extraordinary <laughs> question to ask because it, it did sort of make this, it was almost assuming yep. as if yep. someone yep. at the BBC had decided that they yep. needed a female voice on cricket yep. so they just found someone and yep. like trained them up and taught them yep. about cricket and yep. um, taught them how to commentate and then someone, yep. I remember somebody who was saying to me once, you know, do they tell you what to say? Oh, and yeah. I was like, no, yes. no, no. We, we, we have headphones on but that's largely yep. so we can hear the cricket <laughs> and, and hear yep. each other. Um, you, so there, you know, you, there, there were a lot of comments which came in the early days, for sure. Do you understand? The, 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 do, you, do you sit back and go, geez, I've, I've done all right? Do you, do you get that time to, to be kind of contemplative and, and, and enjoy that, that, uh, that success? And that path that you have made probably easier because you've been so damn good at it for the next people in line? Well, I've, I've, I've tried to make some time because I struggled for a while when I think mm. I was just going sort of hell for leather and yeah. no, I didn't stop like at all. Yeah, um, yeah. This we'll, we'll, of... we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. How, how long have we got? Yeah, we've got a long um, time. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I think whatever pre profession you're in, it, it helps to pause and take stock every now and again. And, you know, and also in, enjoying your success with other people as well. Um, I've been really pleased. I've spent... Um, you know, more time in the last few years with Natalie Germanos, a yeah. South African commentator. Mm -hmm. And Natalie and I first met in 2005. So our careers sort of, you know, followed yeah. the same, yeah. you know, trajectory and same length of time. Um, you know, I was really fortunate working for the BBC that the BBC took me all around the world. And so I got to cover World Cups and be part of host broadcasts and things like that. So I, I became sort of I suppose my, my voice reached more places than Natalie's did, but all of that time, Nat was busy commentating with SABC, doing exactly mm -hmm. the same as mm -hmm. I was, um, but probably just not heard as widely mm -hmm. because she was largely doing the sort of yeah, South Africa games for the South African audience. Um, so, yeah, Nat and I have become really good friends yeah. over the years. And, and now, you know, there is just such a broad and large cohort of of women who are commentating on the game you know all levels and all the the t20 tournaments that have sprung up that have just provided more opportunity as well mm -hmm. so you know a there's there's just more games to be commentated on yep. for all commentators yep. now all over the world yeah. um and there is now you know that the, there's actually an appetite for to have women on the team as well which when you know i started out you know there were no, no one was thinking we want to have you know diverse teams no one was thinking we you know, we, we need to have women to balance things out. You just had to push and push. And yeah, the commentary thing was something I, I just really wanted to do because I spent so much time at yeah. county games doing, you know, one minute updates once an hour. <laughs> I had so much more I wanted to say about yeah. the game. So yeah. I started commentating into a tape to begin with. Good. And I got really valuable feedback yeah. from colleagues and I, you know, worked on it. It wasn't, again, just something that you go, yeah, I'll sit down and I'll do it. It is a craft and you, you learn your craft by listening to others, by having a go, you know, under your own steam, yeah. listening back to yourself, which is a, you know, a horrible yep. thing to have to do. So no one likes, well, I, I, there are some people who I think like the sound of their own voice. <laughs> but you, you, just have, you just have to do it. I, you know, I learned that very yeah. early on in my, in did my you find, 
course. did you find yourself though sometimes going actually i sound pretty good there i sound like i'm having fun which means <laughs> job done no um yeah i don't know Some, sometimes yeah you, you you'll listen you, you listen back and go oh I, I, actually that's okay or or, or <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, weirdly if i mean i listen to other commentators and the best commentary gives me tingles mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. when you're driving yeah. in your car yeah, and it's yeah. an amazing moment you get tingles and yeah. um you know if if, <laughs> if a bit of commentary that that you've done kind of really takes you back to that moment go oh yeah. god like you know i remember that that yeah. moment then yeah but you don't you don't sort of sit and have yourself on replay to oh, no, no no that wasn't no <laughs> I, I just i just remember doing some games and, and i would record them on my phone and I would be driving home at the end of the game, and I would listen to to certain sections. And I and I and I remember sitting there going, "Oh, geez, that's um, I could have said that a whole lot better." And then there oh, were bits like, yeah. and you sort of sit there, and you can actually hear the other person's joy, and you can hear your own joy that you didn't even realise you were having so much fun at the time. You're just you're you're, you're doing a job. It's a, it's a it's a really really good job, but you didn't actually realise how much fun there was in the, the the context or the game or the chat or whatever i think it's hugely valuable being able to find those little bits and and without becoming a, a parody of yourself repeating some of those those patterns something you yeah you... And even i mean listen listening back to yourself you can always be a, a, your own best sort of critique Hell because yeah. you will will pick up on you know gosh i, I repeat that word you know too often i say that too often and i, yeah. I learned very early on to, to self-edit but i'd literally if there was a word which i spotted i was saying too much of or something which could just be sort of edited out yeah. i'd literally write the word down on a piece of paper <laughs> a yeah. line through it yeah and that would be my visual yeah. like do not say that word yeah. um one one really small example i remember this is uh, early on listening back to you know some of those county commentaries where was i was saying the word just all the time Sure. He just comes forwards out of his crease. He just yeah. nudges that into the yeah. leg side. He's just defended that. He just does this. And just one listen back. Just and one, one listen back. Yeah. Out to me. Again, a, tr a trusted voice putting it out to me. And yeah. I listened back yeah. and I was like, oh, God, yeah, they're right. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Write the word yeah. down, just lying through it. And it was that visual reminder. I'm a visual person. Yeah. So you, I, I yeah. sort of have things. You just, um, you put, you, you just, um, something that, sort of led into that conversation. I had, uh, I talked to Melinda Farrell uh, the other night and, and something you just said um, there was, was very much the same, same vein. I'm not just saying it, pardon? Sorry, the word just? No. <laughs> just, yeah, no, it wasn't. No, no. Um, so, no something that you, you both have said in terms of how hard you've had to push. Uh, and you just said you, you had to keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing. And, and that was sort of something that was um, very evident and, and when I was talking to uh, to Mel the other the other night, how how tiring is that, especially at the start oh, of the well, career? I don't know that I felt I had to really push push push. I, I made it known that I wanted to commentate, mm -hmm. and and actually I found with the BBC and with with Adam Mountford, who was in charge of Five Lives Cricket Outfit mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. um, that he he was very very open to it mm -hmm. i think there are a couple of factors at play at the time because 2003 at the time when i was was doing starting to do this yeah uh, was the, the advent of t20 cricket mm -hmm. and that was my vehicle into the game yeah, really perfect. from a commentary perspective because it was a it was a new sort of upstart form of the game it was very untraditional when it sort of lent itself to having a kind of new, slightly upstart, very different voice, yeah. i.e. Yeah. female voice yeah. on the games. Plus, I think being shorter games, again, it's just sort of a different, uh, easy sort of introduction. It's all different. There's a, you know, yeah. there's yeah, yeah, yeah. a real skill to be able to commentate on the fast pace of 20. It's a, it's a different pattern altogether. Yeah, yeah. Cricket, yeah. Um, but it was very much seen as if, yeah, T20 was where you started. Mm -hmm. And then you could progress through to the longer form of the game. And then, you know, in terms of internationals, that was my pattern, T20s, ODIs. Mm. I had to wait eight, eight years before I got an opportunity to commentate on a test match. Wow. So that, that, that was a wait, yeah. um, which, again, combination of factors due to, you know, very many established people who were yeah. doing it. There's not that many test matches that happen in an English summer. And yeah. if you've got, you know, this, you know, X number of commentators on your books, you've got to yeah. give them all their games. Where's the opportunity? Yeah. So, you know, you ha I, I think for me, patience more than having to really push, because I always felt I was, I was backed 
and I was being given plenty of opportunities. As, you know, so there I was traveling all around the world doing the five live reporting and then doing Olympics and doing tennis. And I think as soon as I showed I could commentate in one sport, you just apply those skills to other <laughs> yep. sports as well. So, you know, commentating, you're saying what you see basically. And if you enjoy research, which I do, then you're researching it's a different set of players. It's a different set of stories to tell in the mechanic of a different sport. Yeah. It's just Very that, applicable. It, it's that grasp of trying to find the right word at the right time that um, that uh, that's that I reckon that's one of the big ones. It's like I need that word and I just can't get it. And that, that's the big difference between the good and the the okay commentator. I yeah, you're 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 pretty damn good. Um, <laughs> you you just you um you've been everywhere, and this is going back to what you um you, you said before about managing workload and. And because you've you've been so good, you've had so many opportunities to go plenty of places. But that's hurt you, hasn't it? That that that, that became a uh, that became a bit of a burden, didn't it? Uh, I struggled with the travel aspect eventually. Mm. Um, it's amazing. I mean, I've loved travel. I, I'm a geography geek at a geography university. I love the world and the world. I'm curious about the world and the yeah, people yeah, in it. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's, I, I think as cricketers, you would have all found this as well. On the outside, our job is extremely glamorous. <laughs> we're traveling the world. On the whole, we get to stay in amazing yeah. places. I mean, not every hotel in the world is, is amazing, though. I, you know, I could describe <laughs> some fairly average places that have stayed in over the years as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, vol the volume of work I was doing as a as a commentator every, everything is is on the road mm -hmm. everything is away from mm -hmm. home and mm -hmm. there is a price that, that comes with that um and it caught up with me after because i'd had an incredibly sort of crazy and busy you know fantastic um 2011 2012 oh. and 2013 mm -hmm. and and then fell in a bit of a heap in 2014 mm -hmm. but you know i remember 20 i think probably 2012 was you know, extraordinary year in that uh, I think it started for me in the UAE 2012. January had a tour in the UAE. I think I then came back, um, went to Indian Wells tennis, went mm. to the French Open tennis, came back into the English season, which also in them involved the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. Came out of the Olympic Games, there was like a week or two's gap, then straight into the Paralympic Games. Uh, then I went straight to Sri Lanka for the T20 World Cup mm -hmm. and then came home from Sri Lanka for one week and then went back to India for another two month tour. Mm. And at the end of that, I, I, cer I certainly didn't have a relationship mm. by the end of that because I just wasn't, wasn't sure. around. And yeah. that's, that, that's, that has that's been, without getting too personal, but that yeah. has been one of the most difficult things out of all of this is that you're, mm. you know, for, for many, many years, mm. I was not around very much and yeah. your friends start to you know the conversations you have with them and again I've spoken to a lot of cricketers who I who say a similar thing the conversations become uh, where, where have you just been yeah and where are you going yeah. to do next yeah yeah and what's 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 going on in the middle and yeah. I got to a point where I was like no I'm I'm more than where have I been and where I'm yeah. going to and I had to well sort of enforced stop really because yeah. I did yeah. have a real crash down yeah and you got pretty sick I mean you, you got you got you got quite ill uh, without giving away too much you got you got quite sick and quite ill and, and you needed some some quite a long time of recovery but you had pushed it hadn't you yeah i i ended up going to um i had a did a course of cognitive behavioral therapy in 2014 because that uh, that's right e20 world cup you know ironically it was just at the point where i, I won um I, I was named sports broadcaster of the year for 2013 which was amazing because you had done every single event and tournament there was <laughs> no. And then, and then I paid the price. Um, yeah. And I went to the T20 World Cup in, in Bangladesh and I struggled through that tournament. I really did. Every morning and every night in my hotel room on my own was mm. horrible. Mm. And, but then, you know, I was also able to turn up at every game and commentate with a smile on my face. Mm. And that, that took, looking back now, that took mm. enormous energy mm -hmm. to do that like when you pick yourself up from a point when you're in tears and sort of feeling hopeless and sort of helpless and and lonely, lonely. essentially mm -hmm. yeah to then get on air 
and be all energetic that he needs for commentary. Yeah. I was able to, again, with reflection, when I then came home and I, and I went through this course of, of CBT, I could look back and say, would you, do you know what? It, it, I managed to do that from the place I was in. Yeah. So if I can do that, yeah. how much easier is commentary going to feel when I go back to it and I'm in a better place? You know, if I could still do it despite all of that, mm -hmm. I could take a lot of heart of that saying, yeah, no, I am actually strong. I am resilient. I can still do that even when I'm struggling with everything else that's sort of going on yeah. behind. Um, but yeah, it was, it was quite, it was a learning curve because I, I, I learned a lot about myself through going through that process. Yeah. See, I it made the... me more curious about the mind and about the way the brain works. And... Yeah. And see, so, so same, same. And, 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 I, and, and I have a, um, almost exactly the same sort of scenario, but without the, without the being able to go back. So I now look back at, at my career and, and for sort of 2008 and 2009, it was, it was nonstop and, and that was great. I was doing all right and I was all great and wanted to have kids, but that wasn't happening because I was spending a couple of months a year max with, uh, and, and you know, those sort of scenarios and you're just here, there and you're everywhere. And I wasn't a particularly good person uh, in terms of um, talking to people and just because I was leaving everything to go and play cricket. So I could be in the change room and, and hate it. And I could walk back out in the cricket park and I can go and play cricket. That was fine. But then I'd get back in the change room and I'd hate it because I just, I just couldn't do, I couldn't, I didn't have enough energy to bring myself back down. Cause that's quite hard to do. You, <laughs> sort of I, I, ironically hard to bring energy back down and then go back out and play. And you can, you keep that, that, that whole thing, that, that machine going and going and going. And I wish now I could have, I could go back in a way, wish I could go back and go, okay, cool. Just stop, relax, get those emotions in check, get a little bit more sleep because one feeds the other or one stops the other, get a bit more sleep, be a better person and still go out and play that cricket and then have better, a better outside of cricket sort of life. Um, you now, you get that. Which is which I'm jealous of because you actually get to have that 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 um that go back and do it again with a with a better check on your own self. Is that yeah. Yeah, and I hadn't thought about it like 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 that. And I do. Yeah, I'm absolutely fortunate. I mean, a, a broadcasting mm. career is not. Yeah, it didn't stop at a certain age or sort of you know <laughs> retirement like like yeah, you yeah. do with yeah. the players. Like yeah. I've I've had an opportunity to to pause to to reassess. Um, you know, to do some things differently, um, learn a bit more about myself, yeah. um, try and, you know, again, I, I think that I've been able to restructure you know, my life and my patterns of work a little mm -hmm. bit better because of, again, ironically, because of that crazy mm -hmm. hard work and all the travel and everything I did that actually led me to a, a really, you know, difficult point has actually enabled me to reshape things to a better place now. Did, did, really some of, did some that. of your CBT um, training um, uh, teach you how to say no to jobs? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely part of it as well. Um, yeah, no, it's, and sometimes it's good to say no. We, we, we have learned that. Um, <laughs> it's only yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you do? Yeah, okay. What do you do to, 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 to chill out? I mean, I know you've got a guitar right to your right because you normally <laughs> do have, you don't, because you don't, you don't travel too far without your guitar. You even have a folding one that fits in your, in your travel case. This is the one. This that, is your, you out. Oh, that is your folding. Oh, look, I've seen them and I've always wanted one. Yeah. How easy is it? Oh, that's, that's way too easy. It folds up and then it just goes in my rucksack. It's yeah. That's yeah, that's a sack that I can then take on airplanes. Yeah, you so. could just put it in a, you could just get a cricket bag yeah. and be done with anyway, it. No. So that, that, just put it in a cricket bag, it'll be fine. Yeah. So is that is that your thing? Is that a is that is that a enforced well, it, it was that, that came, the most travel that guitar did was um was the twenty eleven World Cup and I clocked up like how many international and then internal flights yeah. did across a seven week period yeah. and it even went on a tiny little dual propeller job Beautiful. um into chittagong where it actually <laughs> oh. had to sit on my lap because they weren't there wasn't yeah. enough space in the overhead locker sure. and they weren't going to put it in the hold so yeah. i actually sat with it on my lap um yeah so it's got it's gone around the world a, a, a fair few times that's for sure is that your little bit of yeah, that's it. enforced chill enforced tranquilo 
um, I'd arms say, relax time, sort of escape, go away, leave the world behind. Yeah, and I, I thought actually in this lockdown period that I would already be nailing like a whole load mm. of new material, but I've been, again, mega busy with other things. I haven't actually sat down my guitar yet in, the, in this first fortnight, so that's, um, that's definitely Ellie. my... You list. need to say no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and, um, I'm, sorry I'm not really, asking. I'm not really, sorry. Yeah, I'm not really yeah. practicing what I preach, am I? Um, yeah, I told, well, the, the other thing which I've found, um, again, a new hobby that I picked up, mm. because that's one of the things through the, the CBT was looking at myself and going, right, I need to like reconnect with the things which make me who I am. Mm. And I looked back at all the things that I used to do outside of sport which you know even like going back to I suppose my most sort of busy time for like hobbies and things like that was was my school days mm. and I loved being in a choir like I was part of a music consort you know part with the guitar mm. I was doing loads of things um yeah so I've, I've sort of tried to reconnect a bit with with dance um mm -hmm. at one point I, I actually now own a pair of um tap shoes hello just for something completely different Brilliant. well done um, i used to awesome. do ballet when i was much younger i'm yeah. not quite i'm not flexible enough for ballet anymore um but tap is hilarious you just stick your shoes on i go to a class okay. every now and again locally and you the music starts and you just smile like you yeah. cannot help but smile and be put in a good mood. And you've so got, sort of you got great jazz hands. You've got great jazz hands as well, haven't you? <laughs> I've seen it already, <laughs> see? um, so that, that was a com you know, completely different yeah. you know, thing I'd never really done before. Um, and my other new thing which yeah. I took up was photography. Hey. These little... I was going to say, that must be yours, surely, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. mine. I've got, I've got four around my, three around my living room here, that's actually, right. that I've, I've now blown up onto canvases. Um, yeah. So I did a I did a course in 2016, um, and I yeah got myself a proper uh, DSLR camera, and I actually yeah learned about photography. I'd always enjoyed taking photographs on all those cricket tours and all the mm. travel we'd done, but I'd always just had a little you know point and shoot yeah. sort of jobby. Um, to drop wish, it in, it, drop it in at boots and drop it in at boots and get the photos back in a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. Sorry, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. I, uh, I am. I am that old. Sorry, um, sorry, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you were probably doing it black and white, weren't you? I think we had to. We had to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so photography has been amazing, and I did a landscape photography um sort of day when I was living in Australia for a winter, um, and that taught me how to do uh, like sunset photography. Yeah. And that is the most wow. calming thing yeah. ever because they're long exposures. Yeah. You have to be patient. Yeah. You set yourself up, you frame your shot, and then you literally have to leave everything. Yeah. And you just yeah. wait and watch and you hit the yeah. um hit the shutter and yeah. you have to wait for a minute, you know, for it to yeah. go off and then yeah. you wait and see what shot you've ended up taking. And yeah. it's just very, very long. A, a long and slow process yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, exceedingly yeah. calming and i love being in the outdoors as well that's the other thing do more walking and hiking right. was another a, another sort of little mini goal you know throughout yeah. a year it's just say so, right i'm going to get up to you've now, got, you've, now got two, you've now got too many hobbies and, and things leisure activities <laughs> now you've gone and completely filled it up and you're going to be too busy hey you said a word um just there that is um sort of quite uh, pertinent for me at the moment is, is reconnect and and so there's a this trip back to new zealand is actually a big massive sort of reconnect uh, for me, I keep forgetting that we're being recorded as well. And, and it, um, but it, it sort of this trip is, uh, it's, it hasn't been a great sort of uh, summer and then start of winter. And that, that word reconnect was, was exactly the word that I've been um, sort of uh, using when people have been asking me, oh, you know, what are you back for? You, you back for, a, for, a, for something or other? So, no, actually, I just needed to come back and, and do some, see some people and do some driving and um and just have a a real reconnect and it's sort of a you know that that sort of the, the, you need to get topped up you need you get that uh, like like a petrol gauge you need a, a refill of um and a reconnection and and then you started talking about photography and i've started to try and get stars and started to do some nighttime photography and it's like same thing you push the button sit around for a minute finish your glass of wine and then you go back and you and you and you come back and have a look at the photo and you're like 
brilliant, I got one, or you're like, there's nothing yeah, well, there. No, it's, not <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like sitting there and there's mosquitoes biting you and <laughs> sand flies and everything. But there is a, there is a, um, an outdoor thing that just sort of takes you someplace that is, that's nice, isn't it? it just, nature, um, nature is the other thing. And mm, I've mm. got like stupid amounts of pleasure last year mm. from growing some tulips. Like yeah. I love tulips, oh. my favorite yeah. flower. Okay, that's my and favorite flower. Don't tell anyone else. Don't yeah. tell anyone else, but a tulip is my favorite yeah. flower. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're my favorite. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, just having. I've got. I'm very fortunate uh, in London where I live. You know, a lot of people don't have any sort of um, you know out, outdoor space. I've got a, a shared little backyard. It's a very little cool. space. I, I have a. I have a flower bed. I have a little bench area I've created, like with a little sun trap, and and I've I've planted stuff, and it's actually exceedingly gratifying watching yeah. things grow um, and I've got I've got a whole bunch of plants in my living room here one, one of which um, I've had since year one of university when Hello. I arrived in halls of residence well I got an umbrella tree um, oh, yeah. and it was yeah, maybe only sort of that that big it was like a yeah. desktop umbrella tree yeah. Yeah. and now it's, it's been repotted and repotted and it's in a you know pot about that mm. wide and it's big and it's bushy and like that has literally been with me since I was 18 years old, wow. the first day of university. And it's been around like every house I've lived in since then. It's gone and off it's... to my mum's when I've been away for you yeah. know two months. It needs a bit yeah. of watering. Um, so you have to you have to get the, carry the carry your umbrella plant down to the car to mum's. <laughs> Oh, properly, yeah, yeah. Like okay. it needs its own seat in the car now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the umbrella. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> my, my, my umbrella tree has now it's 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 now got three generations of it because oh, wow. I, I took a cutting. Yeah. And that's now grown up that big, and then there's oh. another cutting that's like that big. So I've got a like a granddaddy uh, yeah, father yeah, yeah. and a you know and a little one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, awesome. It's, it's silly. Little, little things you take pleasure from, and actually nurturing something yeah. is um it, it's really quite therapeutic. Yeah. What are you doing at the moment? What's what? What is lockdown time for for, for Alice and Mitchell? What are you apart um, from trying lockdown, to relax and learning how to yeah, say well, no better? No. Well, I've been helping out actually um, in my role as chair of the cricket writers club, which yeah. is um, the body that represents all the cricket media yep. in the UK. Um, we've been doing a lot of work. Well, the ones that get invited. Yeah. They invited. To be, it's a membership form on the there, website. Over, there you go. It. No, I'm not, no, I wasn't. What I was, that wasn't. All right. yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, have, we have overseas members. We are, yeah, yeah. We are internationally open. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing quite a bit of work um, yeah. you know, supporting our members. We've, we've set up a sports freelance collective with all the other sports sure. um, media organisations in the yeah, UK. Yeah. Uh, football writers, rugby writers, athletics, tennis, etc. Um, so yeah, a lot of people have just seen that income wiped out, you know, for this, no live sport mm. going on for mm. a commentator, you know, like me, I was mm. expecting to be commentating on a full summer of cricket and at the yeah. moment, no cricket. So yeah, so it's, um, get creative time. And, so what, um, is and think what is, what, what is creative Ellis and Mitchell got up his sleeve in? What is the, what is the, the uh, well, I haven't put much thought into it yet because I've been oh, so busy geez. doing all the, uh, doing everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm, 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 again, fortunate Stumped is continuing. So that's the BBC yeah. program which you, mm -hmm. you yeah. tested Thank you. on last week. Thank you very much um, for that as well. Yeah, so, so that's carrying on weekly at the moment, which mm -hmm. I'm really, really pleased about because we'll yeah. try and give a little bit of light relief as well as, yeah. you know, obviously reflect on what cricketers are up to during yeah. this period and how their lives are being affected. But we also want to do some features in the program every week which have nothing to do with coronavirus and just mm -hmm. take everyone away for a yeah. little bit of escapism. So... So really pleased that that's continuing on the BBC for the moment. Um, and yeah, then I don't know, it might be time to write my book, maybe. It's always been um, again. How many books do you have in you? you everyone's got one, as they say. <laughs> how many books do you <laughs> have in you, though? Well, do you know what? I, I have struggled to ever sit down and write a book or think about one because I'm, I am a bit of a people person. And I've often yeah. thought I would struggle to sit on my own and write and write and write, you know, in the level that's required to write a yeah. book. But now it's kind of enforced on me anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I live on my own. So I'm going to be here on my own anyway. I may as well be productive. So, hey, <laughs> maybe there's going to be a silver lining to all this. You just, just, just talk it. Just, um, just narrate your book like a, like a session of uh, <laughs> 20 minutes in and 20 minutes out and then 20 minutes back yeah. in again. But hey, I haven't even asked you. Your your flight is still going next week, isn't it? At the moment. Yeah, fifth fifth is still um yeah fifth is still the uh, the dream date. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's a forty four hour flight as well. So it's it's not not quite the perfect. Really you know, 
uh, it's just the layovers. Uh, I think I've got a long layover in Sydney to to start the um, from uh, from Auckland. I've got to get to Auckland as well. And we're not allowed. Uh, everything's locked down. So so it's going to be a little bit of a yeah. I'm, have to work out a way of walking to Auckland inside seven days or something like that. Um, I'll work it out. I'll work it out. I'll, uh, I have no idea. It's quite, it's quite a good southerly at the moment. I'll just put up a kite and, um, and fly there. Yeah. So I don't so know. You, work... you quite fly, don't you? Is your relax? Yeah. That, that's a little bit of my, yeah, it's a little bit of my, um, it's like juggling. You, you kind of have to switch off. And I was, um, yeah, it's like bowling. If you don't concentrate, it falls and smashes into the ground. And, and I, um, yeah, it's just, those things that take you out of the house and then force you to have something else as your, you know, like guitar. Perfect. You know, you just sit there and you, and you make a noise and, it, and, it, and it's good fun. And if you don't concentrate on it, it sounds horrible. Um, I can lose myself in the guitar yeah. like for hours. Can I you, will sit, you, you um, will sit there for hours. Yep. 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 I, I don't do it often enough. That's my yeah. thing. But I mean, once I do pick so, it up, then, a few hours fingers? How, are, how are the tips of you yeah. yeah well no i've got a um i've got my Don't. acoustic digital then i've got my classical which is obviously yeah. nylon yeah, yeah 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 um and that's the one i really need to nail actually because i was i've got pieces which i used to be able to play to perfection when i was like oh. 18 years old ah, okay. and i yeah, really yeah, yeah. need to I want. I need to relearn those and perfect yeah. them. And then, but then I've got um, uh, a Fender twelve string, and that does. Oh, that'll rip them. Fingers. <laughs> that, that's um, until they bleed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I was going to buy some pedals actually just before this all happened, and I you know, really like have a bit of a play yeah. and get creative because I'm quite. I was, I was like, cl I'm a classical guitarist essentially. Wow. You are your own little. You are your own little planet, aren't you? You do everything. <laughs> you do everything. Not not really, um, but yeah, I, I need to. Um, I can't remember where I was going. I was going with that saying that I was pedals. Pedals, yeah. So just trying to trying to do something a bit, <laughs> a bit, a bit different, um, because I have just been. Yeah, it's just been me and my guitar. But I want to. I want to play with some gizmos and gadgets and see what. You want, what you want to pedal with the tambourines, or the, the clang clangs, and a big <laughs> drum on the back? Is that what you want? <laughs> Um, see, uh, uh, and this also occurred to me when I was, when I was talking to um, Mel Farrell the other night, and it's like, I are, uh, and I asked her similar sort of questions, and then I'm like, at the end of it, I'm like, geez, damn, why have I, but the, 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 the talking about you as a, as a female in the sports world, um, I, I still kind of feel like I should apologize for asking those questions, because it's, it isn't, it isn't the same anymore, if that makes sense. It's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, so, so do, do you kind of get what I'm saying? Because it, it, yeah. it is still, you're still a minority, but it's a whole lot different, yeah? No, we're, we're in, in the minority, which still means that the, the, work, the workspace is still a bit abnormal. Yeah. Like I could yeah. still go on an England tour and still be the only yeah. female in the entire press pack, the entire media yeah. pack. Yeah. So it's still, yeah, that, that's, the, again, and that was a, for sort of a decade of my life, that was a pretty yeah. abnormal way of existing. Yeah. If you think about it, every yeah, yeah. breakfast, every work day, every evening, every evening out, your whole existence on tour mm -hmm. for two months is, is, yeah. is you and a bunch of guys. And when I started out as well, I was 25 years old on my first England tour. And I was, I, I, I was, I think I probably was comfortably the youngest. Mm. And a lot of, you know, a lot yeah, of the yeah. journos then were, probably you know more, more like my, my my father's generation kind of yeah. thing so again it's an abnormal way for a 25 year old to spend yeah. two months in the, in the company you of you can't drink three bottles of three bottles of red wine like they can can you well you know I, actually i couldn't <laughs> 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 I, that's part of the training <laughs> that's part yeah. of the training yeah um but yeah um it is it, you are still a minority in your workplace yeah. but i'll say the um the acceptance and the, the, the attitude is just is a lot more normal. Is maybe is the, there, the is, 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 there, there's, is there still the, a level of acceptance, or has that become when you said that if there's a level of acceptance, that means there's it still it still feels awkward to, to some because they are accepting uh, well, it, or I, is I it, or is it normality, or is do you see the difference yeah, between I, normality I and acceptance? I can't speak for anyone else, but yeah, sure. I yeah I. I don't think that it is people aren't accepted 
you know, in, in any way. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think people are viewed more equally in that no matter what your gender, mm -hmm. you still have to be a good journalist. Yeah. You still have to be good at your job. You still have to know your, your stuff yeah. regardless. Yeah. And I think, I think people see less of, of, of who you are in terms of gender now, if you're entering in that workspace as, yeah. as a journalist now um it, it feels to me like there isn't sort of judgment on you being a female whereas yeah. to start with again those questions about well do you like cricket you know and a lot of that has come through you know <laughs> it's very symbi symbiotic relationship the growth of the actual yeah. women's game itself mm -hmm. and the the profile of the women playing cricket mm. um elevates it to again it's normal for women to be into cricket it's normal for women to have an intimate yeah. knowledge and understanding yeah. of cricket because yeah. people can see it on their tvs they can see that women know the game either yeah. playing it talking about it and it all it all sort of self-perpetuates and, yeah. and and grows into the into a sense of well, cricket is cricket yeah. and and anybody can be into it and can understand it and has a right to talk about it. Now, now talk, talk me through 90 odd thousand at the MCG watching a, watching a standalone game of cricket. God, that was amazing. I, I was watching that at home because again, due to my sort of struggles <laughs> with being away from home all the time, I'd yeah. taken the really difficult yeah. decision not to do wow. that Women's World Cup because I'd just spent over like, two months away in Australia already. Yeah. Um, but watching it, God, I, I was, I thought they nailed the intro, like Katy Perry. <laughs> I, I got, I had, I had goosebumps watching it and just thinking all the years of my first women's world cup was, was 2005. I mean, yeah. the game is unrecognizable from that and the, the yeah. level of investment in, in certain countries, you know, domestic level and Australia leading the way with all of that. Australia absolutely deserved for that night to be a success. Oh. Um, you know, Australian cricket in terms of, you know, the investment they've put in and driving of the women's game and the, the treating of it as, mm. as, as, as normal. And, and even just the, the use of language um, around the game, which, you know, the last few years in Cricket Australia sort of led with and, and the ICC, you know, fully got behind the sense of referring to um, the men's cricket teams and the women's cricket teams, mm -hmm. rather than just an assumption that if we talk about England and Australia, we're talking about yeah. England men and Australia men. Make mm -hmm. that distinction because I could mm -hmm. read an opening paragraph of a, um, you know, of a newspaper article or the first line of a, of a sports bulletin script, which just says England beat India, yeah. you know, by three wickets to go two 0 up in the series. Yeah. And actually, as a as a follower of the women's game, I'd be looking, going, well, are you, are you talking about men's or women's cricket? Yeah. Like there are yeah. two teams. Here. I think that. That is a really important shift for me, along with the, obviously the, the projection of the game on, on television, is the way it's presented to the public. Yeah. And, and we have a really important role as, as media to, to sort of lead that way and be constantly reminding people, you know, every time we talk about um, yeah, the England men's team, make sure yeah. we're stipulating that it's the England men's mm -hmm. team because a women's yeah. team also exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very, very simple thing, but it's actually really important subliminally uh, for people to get that message yeah. every time they, they hear the word men's. It, it's a trigger to say, oh, there's, there's a women's team also. Do you, um, you got me going there a little bit while I was off camera, just, just how you talked about it. And, and there's an element that you were talking about it like it was part of, uh, part of you. And, and, and I want to kind of finish, I guess, finish on that is that it is a massive part of what you've done. That 90 odd thousand at the MCG is a big part of what you've brought to the game. Do you see it like that? Do you see that you've oh, God, opened me, it? Not me. No, 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 mean, no, no, but you've been a part of that game that has then moved the woman's game to where it is. And, and the, the, the transition of having one West Indian woman quite a long time ago to now it being four four people four women on a in the rotor on radio and and TV that's part of now part of your story do you do you, do, do, you, do you kind of feel that at all um well, I, I would hope that I've played a part in it making it easier for those who have come up beneath to yeah, to, to enter into this and see, I mean, that, that, that phrase of, you know, you can't, you can't be what you can't see and you, you can't be what you yeah. can't hear, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, and I, I, I get so much pleasure out of it when, um, you know, mothers or fathers contact me saying, you know, my, my six-year-old 
you know wants to do what you do and that 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 for me is pretty that's that's pretty cool you know as much as you know your um you know charlotte edwards would have had it when she was captaining yeah. england you know heather yeah. knight would have it now uh, melissa healy and, and meg yeah. landing like they'll all have it They're you know the, yeah. the six-year-olds and parents coming to them saying they want to play cricket and yeah. there's those who actually also want to talk about cricket or write about cricket and and just be involved or it makes the game more accessible to them because they're hearing a female voice talking about it it makes them think oh it is for me and that had never really necessarily occurred to me because growing up I just loved listening to you know whether it was Richie Benno or mm -hmm. whoever it was I, I never actually felt oh it's a man's voice therefore it's not for me because I was I was used to hanging out with my older brother and my male cousins playing cricket all the time anyway but that's just me there's a whole heap of girls out there yeah. who who feel kind of a bit of a barrier with it being you know sort yeah. of having men talking about it men presenting it men playing it and they need to see that it can be done and is done by women and for women as well hey, it's so that's your, been a bit of a lesson it, for me and, and every, you're everybody is you're that you're that big umbrella tree that you've got that's that's given these little seeds and and, and and create it no but i don't say i don't say it lightly ali you 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 you're a giant and, and you've you've allowed people to to get on top and and part of that is the game itself because of your dedication and love of cricket and the other sports you do but cricket in particular we get to see the the growth of it and i got a i got a nine-year-old daughter who probably won't play cricket because she hates sport but that's only because I like sport and she hates whatever I like. So, but, but she will spend a couple of minutes longer watching girls play cricket. And you're a part of that. And, and, that, and that, that, that's awesome because there's also girls on cricket and girls' voices. That gives my daughter a little bit more gravitas to, towards the TV, which is cool. Um, but, you know, you, you're bigger than, uh, yeah, you don't quite get it. Yeah, I don't, I don't reckon. But, you know, there's a whole, there's a whole army of, of, of of people, I mean, not yeah, within the media comms team. I mean, I mean, I look at uh, Mel Jones go, and what she does. Just go, thanks. And that's very kind. <laughs> yeah, no, but I do. You know, it, it's it's people like Mel Jones leading the way yeah. as well. Yeah. She has, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. she also doing um, you know, sort of ad, ad hoc bits of TV commentary, yeah. you know, around about the same time that I was. Yeah. But she had a full time job in sports marketing, and it was a big yeah. leap for her to say, mm. "I'm going to put my full time." job aside to have a crack at being a full-time cricket media personality and commentator and she's absolutely smashed it but then it's all the all those people behind the scenes who are actually you know making those decisions and driving things that say like the, that commercial level to get the investment sure. in the women's game um yeah. you know whether it's those driving at icc level and arty de at the icc you know really pushed like the broadcasting side of it for those world cups and the evolution of it holly colvin's doing an amazing job with the ICC and Claire Connor has driven so mm -hmm. much of it mm -hmm. chair of the women's committee so it's, it's so look, many look, so many layers like so many layers so no, of course it's not no but but I think you need also need to go back and to see your CBT uh person and learn how to go <laughs> yeah chance yeah, actually that's yeah, actually I am a part of that that's that's kind of cool um Ali yeah. thank you so much for your time you I I could spend hours because I just I enjoy. Well, I actually, I actually wanted well, to. Yeah, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We're going to rain delay. Yeah, yeah. Bring on a. I haven't got. I always had a little corner on the inside of the page that had uh, rain delay subjects. Always, uh, yeah. I had a little page, a little section that had three or four topics of rain delays because I did not want to be short. <laughs> because <laughs> um, yeah. I always got caught in a rain delay it always happened especially during women's internationals always got caught in a rain delay and everyone's just looking around and I'm like well I've got three subjects it's fine yeah perfect, perfect. preparation preparation, preparation and I and, uh, <laughs> yeah hey thank you so much again thank you so much um, take care stay safe in really the UK and you. I will um, yeah. see you this summer sometime I hope you over here somewhere yeah, yeah. fly back yeah. safe OB thank you cheers Ellie and I'll...